Hey, Midday just launched this awesome open source pitch deck. And in today's video, we're going to dive into the code behind it. The pitch deck is fully open source. It was built with Next.js and Shadcn, so we can see exactly how it was built and how you can build this pitch deck yourself. And people are raving about it. For example, the CEO of Vercel writes, kind of sickening how good this is. And yeah, of course he loves it because it was built by Shadcn and Next.js, but I think he loved it even before he knew how it was built. Here you can see the deck itself. If I just jump to the first screen, you can see I'm navigating with my keyboard, super slick. This is the carousel component from Chad CN. Here you can see the views, how many people have seen this. This number's going up very quickly. When I started recording the video an hour ago, it was a thousand less. By the time you watch it, it might be another few thousand more. Here you can see the book and meeting link all the way at the end. This is another open source project we've covered in a previous video, cow.com's booking link. Um, and yeah, everything about it is just super nice. Some of the other cool things in the pitch deck, these numbers are live in real time. So an investor can be looking at this deck and it's grabbing the live data from the GitHub API via the GitHub stars. Here you can see live posts on Twitter about what people are saying about midday. And here you can see a video that has been loaded in. This uses Cloudflare streaming to load the video in and, and it just loads automatically, super quick, super clean and smooth. So yeah, I love everything about this pitch deck. It's really easy to customize to your own needs as well. So go take a look at the code, go wow your own investors before this becomes the big trend, but really love what they're doing here. And just based on how beautiful the pitch deck is and how slick it is, I'd, I'd love to invest. So let's dive into the code behind the project. You'll notice it's a Next.js app. Over here, we have the pitch folder. Inside, you'll find page.tsx. So the code over here is what is represented on this page. Um, you'll see it's a very simple page, two components. We have a grid component, so this is the background over here. You might not be able to see it in the video. I can barely see it here, but you see some faded lines, so that's the grid component over here. And then we have pitch carousel, and that's uh, the main part of the app. So let's go into pitch carousel, and this is basically using a carousel component. Um, you'll notice over here it's using the Shad CN one, so this is... Um, yeah, a lot of the app components in this app are from ShadCN, and ShadCN itself uses a different library, which is called, um, where is it? It is called Embla. So if you want to take a look more, I have it over here, Embla Carousel. Um, this is the component that is being used for the carousel, and here you can see examples, and it's very slick and nice, and you can drag it and so on. So here you can see every single page as a carousel item, carousel start. I'm not going to dive too deep into that library. You can take a look at the code behind it if you're interested. Um, and at the bottom here, we'll see the carousel toolbar. Um, so yeah, if we take a look, you can see we're sliding along. If I jump on book a meeting, you'll see it jumps to the end to get to the book a meeting page and each interaction is very nice. So let's take a look at that toolbar we were just playing around with at the bottom. Here you can see some views, the calendar button, which has jumped to the end and then uh, previous and next. So to get the views, um, we load it from a, our, one of our APIs. Here you'll see we're doing fetch view counts, which what it does is it basically increments the view count and it gets a new view count back. Um, for set view counts, what we're doing, take a look here. We see we're using server actions. This is really, really simple. All we're doing is client.increment, and this is using Redis behind the scenes. If we take a look at this KV package, so you can see we're just returning the result of views at a certain path. And if we take a look at the KV folder, also super simple package, but it's using up slash redis behind the scenes uh, behind the scenes for the key value store. And this is yeah, the most simple package I've ever seen. But it basically just wraps red redis up slash and you can see it's um, server only. Over here as well, server only. This is uh, in the actions folder. So um, it, it's an app router action that we're using. So jumping back into the code, where are we? Um, here you can see we get the view count for the pitch page. Um, we set it and then um, the views that are being displayed, you will see them um, in the toolbar at the bottom. Okay, so we've got to jump into the toolbar component. We'll go to carousel toolbar. Should really be running this in VS Code instead of in the browser. But um, here you can see the views are basically displayed in this component over here and they're formatted in a nice way so that they don't go over using compact notation. So you'll see here 2.8K views is what we've had. Um, the toolbar itself, um, some of the other buttons we mentioned here, you can see the book a meeting item. It's got API scroll to 100. So this means scroll to the end. 
um, with 100 being the end. And API is coming from Use Carousel. So Use Carousel as well is part of the ShadCN package that I mentioned um, that we're importing. If you take a look here in the UI folder, this is where everything uh, from ShadCN um, has been added. And you can see the different components from Embla here. Also, in terms of using the API, um, they've added shortcuts for left and right. So if I go to the example again, you can see I'm hitting the left and right keys and it's very smoothly transitioning. So that's using Re React Hotkeys hook. And all that happens is we're listening for arrow right and arrow left. And if we go right, we want to do scroll to the next screen. And if not, we want to scroll to the previous scene. Scene. So this is like really simple, but also amazing uh, implementation. I love how clean and simple the code is, but uh, for something just sort of really effective. I wasn't, I never really use carousel components, but this is a great uh, place to be using one. In terms of what else is happening here, I'll just show you a bit more. You can see uh, that the previous button is API.scrollPrevious, uh, API.scrollNext. So you can see uh, they're disabling it if we can't scroll any further and so on, knowing the opacity. You can see the next slide, previous slide, uh, the tooltips. This is all part of ShadCN, so I'm not going to go too deeply into it. Um, great library that you should definitely check out. And the last part that I wanted to show you here was the animation. So you can see animate presence. This is part of um, frame of motion. This basically animates things when they come on screen. So when this component is coming on screen, this toolbar, you'll see it animate. And let's take a look there. You saw it pop up from the bottom. And in terms of the, the frame motion div that we have, basically when views is greater than zero, then we want it to be positioned in its correct spot. Otherwise, um, it should be at the bottom. So this is basically before the page is loaded, we want this to be set to zero. Um, the initial spot is 100 and um, it's basically moving it into the correct spot um, on the screen and that's the animation that we just saw. This is the animation that before Y was like pushed 100 down and then when the views load, it gets pushed up 100. So also really simple animation. Let's just take a look at that again. You'll see how it just pops up like really beautifully. So frame of motion is a great library to use for that. And a lot of the other things on the app, like sort of these animations are using frame of motion here. You'll see another minor animation and yeah there's just a lot of cool stuff you can see throughout this up when you go to sign up you'll see a lot of these like really subtle and beautiful animations so that's the structure of the page itself and then you'll see each slide has um it, its own component for it so if we take a look at section start um you'll see here pitch 2024 top right let's just go to the first slide here pitch 2024 uh, we should see midday somewhere in it so this is all just standard html even though it sort of doesn't really feel that way. Um, behind the scenes, this is just regular um, text you can copy. These are images and so on. So if we take a look at the next slide that we have, we have section problem. So again, we'll jump into it, the current problem midday. And you can see you can very easily adjust this to your own needs to make it your own deck. If you decide And here, you can see different images that are added. N nothing too crazy happening here. This is just uh, using HTML or React to create the pitch deck, which is really cool. Um, anything else which is interesting here, here you can see a video. So let's jump into that one. Um, over here, you'll see section demo. So play video. Um, where is section demo? So it's over here. Again, we're setting up some, some hotkeys to go and do different actions. But before we get there, let's take a look what component it's using. It's using a library called React, React HLS Player. So this a library that is importing dynamically probably to save space or maybe because of SSI issues. I'm not sure, but either way, um, to increase uh, to speed up loading speed might be a good reason as well. Um, but you can see here, this is the library that they are using. I've got it set up over here in the background and this HLS stands for, um, well, I can't even remember. It's a live streaming format basically that Apple created. Here you can see that you'll like load it the the video from a certain source and it will stream the video in and what's really cool about this is that it will load very quickly so if i go to this page again i'm just going to refresh jump to the video screen and you'll see it's immediately there and that's happening because it doesn't have to send you the entire video in one go it can just send you the initial parts of the video and then it can sort of stream the rest 
as uh, time goes on. So it might not have even loaded the end of the video yet, but uh, sort of similar to streaming on YouTube, only the beginning of the video gets loaded. So that's made possible with React HLS and it uses Cloudflare stream behind the scenes for the video. So React HLS player, if we take a look at the video itself, here you'll see the stream that's being used. So it's using cloudflarestream.com um, and you can see the different actions that can be taken on the video. For example, toggle play, um, handle restart and so on. And there's sort of some logic here. If we are on desktop or on mobile, you can see we're using these hotkeys here. If you do space, then you can toggle play. If you do backspace, then it will restart the video. So these are some really small and nice touches, but look how easy they made it to implement. They added like five lines of code or, you know, this is really like one, two lines of code. Um, and they got this keyboard functionality working. So I really like that. Next page is the pitch page. Um, it's again, just sort of data that they have set up and this data actually, what's really cool. This is live. So GitHub stars, it's calling from their API waitlist signups and so on. Um, this is all live data. And here you can see a link to more posts about what people are talking about them on X. Also really nice touch. It just does a query for midday.ai on Twitter. But let's take a look at how that is set up. Waitlist signups. I'm going to search for that in the project. Um, here we are. So this is the traction section where we are midday and so on. And we should see some stats somewhere on this page. Here you can see Stargazer's count. So let's see where stars is being called um, and stars is being set. And this again is calling um, a server action to go and set the GitHub stars. If we see in actions fetch GitHub stars, we'll be able to see how they are fetching the stars from the GitHub API. And it's really simple. It's using caching to make sure that it doesn't need to call the API the whole time for five minutes. And yeah, like this is how it's getting the stargazers count and providing it live to anyone that's reading the pitch deck. So right now it's on 909. When I started it before, it was at like seven, 800. A bit more about the team. Um, yeah, more about the deck and why they're such a great business. And then once we jump to the end, we get the cow.com embed. And if you're not familiar with cow.com, we've done another video about them in the past. Um, let me just go to this screen. But one thing that is cool that cow.com put together is a React component. I think you could probably also make it work with an iframe. But if we look at Cal Embed, this is going to show us the Cal.com Embed React package uh, that Cal uses. And here you can see this is how it's added to the page. And yeah, Cal has their own component to make it really easy to go and book a call with them. So yeah, that's a pitch deck. Um, after going through the video, it's actually really simple how it's been done. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like it's amazing. What an amazing, yeah, it's amazing the effect they created, uh, with such simple code. Um, and yeah, really don't mean that in a bad way at all. Like all our code should be as beautiful and simple as this. And the pitch deck also looks like visually great. And I would love to invest in this, just seeing like sort of, and not having even read the deck yet, but I, I just love what the team is doing over here. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Um, be sure to give them a star on GitHub. Be sure to give Inbox Zero a star on GitHub as well. I will leave the links in the description below. Until next time.